welcome to the Pink Hair Girl podcast. My name is Sally Jane and it's really wonderful to have you with me here today. For those that are returning viewers, welcome back. And for those trying out the podcast for the first time, it's really wonderful to have you here. Today is the 18th of December and we're heading into Christmas time. I must have been a really loud Christmas. So <laughs> as you can see, I have my Christmas hat on. And the earrings, remember last time I told you I found, oh no, that's really stuck in my head. I told you I found little tree decorations and I was going to turn them into earrings. Well, I have. So this is my set and Rachel's busy wearing the Christmas trees. And the other day I went shopping. Tuesday was a public uh, holiday, bank holiday here in South Africa. And um, the geek and I went to go and do a little bit of Christmas shopping. And I think I wore... My Christmas earrings, I wore a different Christmas hat and my little reindeer Christmas brooch, which I'll tell you a bit more about in a minute. And Rach was so embarrassed. I said to her she could come with us, you know, shopping if she wanted to. She doesn't, um, she's never said outright that she, you know, knows it's us rather than Father Christmas. But yeah, there's an inkling there that she might be sort of suspicious. Anyway. I said to her she could come with us shopping if she wanted to rather than stay at um, Emma's mom's house um, if she wants to but she decided no she would rather stay there I think the thought of going shopping with her mother <laughs> wearing embarrassing Christmas jewelry and hats was just too much for her preteen um for preteen Rachel to handle so anyway she decided to to stay at home um I don't know do you um well, maybe think of it just that they stayed with, with Emma's mom. Um, and I was going to say they said with Omar, but I suppose that's not a very common, um, you know, word that you, many people would understand for grandparents, unless maybe if your grandparents were Dutch or, or German. Um, Emma's dad's not alive, but his mom is, and so the children call her Omar, um, which is the, the Afrikaans word for granny or gran or something like that. And the Afrikaans for for um, grandpa or grandfather would be opa. So uh, Emma will one day be an, an opa. <laughs> and I have said I'm not going to be an opa, I will be granny. Um, it's funny how when you have these sort of words that you've grown up with, you know, that, that you kind of feel like you're either one or the other. I struggle really to be Auntie Sally, never mind um, granny, but we'll see. Hopefully that's a long way off. <laughs> I hope you're all well and that you're all surviving the, the silly season. As you can see, it is hot and sunny in Cape Town today. And I've changed um, my recording location slightly. I thought I'd move the chair and see what it was like here. This is the a Pac-Man bookcase. I know you can only see part of it. But this is a Pac-Man bookcase that the geek made me because, you know, we're kind of geeky like that. And I'd seen it in a picture somewhere and I'd said I want one of those. So he made it for me. Speaking of sort of geeky things, there was this, I saw somewhere a nerd test. So I, I know I'm not particularly um, geeky or science kind of orientated or whatever, um, but I thought I would take this, this nerd test. So I think I scored, I think I'd call it cool non-nerd. So I was kind of like friendly to nerd, but not quite on the sort of nerd scale. Um, and so I said to Emma, he has to take the test. And you'll see I put up the results in my group. And um, he scored like really high, in all, except the social ineptitude. He's shy, but he's not so sort of socially inept. And uh, so he was called an, a, a cool, which is again not kind of completely socially inept, a cool nerd god. <laughs> yes, and he squarely identifies himself as a nerd or a geek or whatever it is so yeah that was our bit of fun you should go and do the test i think it's on nerdtest.com or something like that and then you look for the nerd test version too <laughs> if you've got nothing better to do with your time now anyway let's get on with the um the knitting and the other stuff in the podcast okay my first bit of news is a public health um, warning, okay, kind of a public health service announcement to sort of protect everybody else's health. Knitting can damage your health. <laughs> I have a knitting related injury. Those of you that are on Instagram 
will see in my feed that I put a photo of a ball of yarn, the one that I had got um, last time, and I'd said that I was going to make socks from it, but really spoke to me, it spoke to me, I've got yarn speaking to me. <laughs> um, it really just felt like it should be a toy. Don't you ever see a skein or something and you can just see the end product with it. You can just see this needs to be socks or mittens or I can just see a cardigan out of this or a hat or whatever. And that was just this um, ball of yarn. I just thought to myself, I can see one of those stripy monster toys from this. And so Titus had a birthday party to go to last week, Thursday. And last week, Wednesday afternoon, and it was quite late afternoon, like four-ish or something like that. I decided, now I wonder if I can knit this kid a toy. I hadn't found what I wanted as a toy for, for what I wanted to send. We wanted to send some Lego and I hadn't managed to find what I wanted when we got to the shop. So then I thought, I'm going to have to take something to the birthday. Well, maybe I should knit something. And then I convinced myself that I could knit a Rebecca Danger's monster in less than 24 hours. So I put a picture on Instagram and said, do you think it's possible to knit this monster in less than 24 hours? So I blame all of you because everyone said, yes, of course you can and go for it and we'll cheer you on. So, um, so spurred on by the internet's bravado, I decided, fine, I'm going to knit a monster in 24 hours. And then something happened and I had to make supper and then the phone rang and I was sorting out my grad and then something else. So I did a little bit in the evening after the kids had gone to bed. Then I watched a bit of TV and I was actually dead tired. So my great thing was I was going to knit all night. It didn't really happen. And I had done the two legs and a little, I kind of joined it for the body by the time I'd gone to bed that night. Um, and I'll put a picture of the, of the monster I was going to make in there and where I was the following morning. So now I had until two o'clock in the afternoon to finish this monster with a gap in the middle because I had to go and fetch Rachel um, from swimming and come back and so that was about an hour in between so I had just this one bit of time in the morning to finish this entire monster and so it wasn't I mean I finished it the problem was when you knit toys you always knit on a size down so I held the yarn double so essentially I think it's about a DK if you hold two sock together I mean depending a kind of light sport or DK or whatever. So DK weight, and I decided not to knit it on a three mil needle, you know, which is normally if you're going to knit a toy on a slightly slighter gauge or whatever, a three mil needle can be recommended. But Rebecca Danger in her pattern says, no, go down one or two recommended needle sizes um, to make sure it's tight so stuffing doesn't show, th show through. So what do I knit it on? A 2.75. I'm not sure what that is in, in American um, needle sizes. I'll put it on the bottom. 2.75. I decided to knit, in DK, a monster in less than 24 hours. Don't do it. It can be done. You can knit a monster in less than 24 hours. Don't do it. I got a repetitive strain injury. <laughs> so on Friday, I kind of felt um, really tender. Like it was sort of almost felt like it was swollen in the palm of my, my hands here. Funnily enough, my left hand, more than the right, and so it started here, and then by Saturday, I was trying to rest it, but I could feel it wasn't great. I was busy doing other stuff, and by then it had started to tingle and to, it never really hurt, but I could, it feels just strange, like a, a different sensation, a bit sort of hot, a bit swollen here, and then down my arms like this. Yeah. I did, I did actually carry on knitting. I knitted a bit on Friday and knitted a bit on Saturday. And by the time I finished knitting on Saturday, I actually really wasn't struggling with my grip, but I could feel that my grip wasn't as good and, and all that. So I phoned my dad on Monday, who's a doctor, and I said, Dad, I think I've done myself a knitting injury. Oh my gosh, he laughed so much. So he said, apparently there's the ulnar nerve, which is the nerve that travels along this side of your, your um, arm here. And it can, if you do an, an emotion over and over and over, you can cause slight inflammation either in the wrist or in the elbow. And then that can cause this sort of sensation. It actually cause quite a lot of pain in the wrist. Mine, unfortunately, wasn't all that painful. But, you know, um, sort of hot and red and uh, sensation changes. And I could just feel with knitting it wasn't that comfortable. So I had to stop knitting. I didn't knit all of, that was the Monday, all of Monday. Tuesday, 
and Wednesday. And my dad said to me, it will, it will clear up quite quickly. You know, it's just the inflammation of that um, area and so it's pressing on the ulnar nerve. Oh, really? So, um, I didn't, and he said it should resolve quite quickly. I can't take anti-inflammatories. My stomach's a bit sensitive to them. So, just with a lot of rest, it should be fine. So, last night, I needed a little bit for the first time. And it's not 100%, but it's not too bad. So those of you knitting on a Christmas deadline, be careful people, be careful. It's dangerous out there with knitting needles and repetitive strain injuries. The biggest advice is if you're going to knit something on a really tight gauge, mix it up with other stuff and don't do it in solidly um, to try and finish something in 24 hours. And um, they say being able to knit two different styles, you're being able to knit English and continental or being able to do... Um, your know, fair hour work in between or knit on looser needles and then you know not just socks or whatever try to mix it up a bit take regular breaks there's all sorts of blog articles and articles on nitty and all of these about looking after your hands and how to kind of you know make sure that you don't get these injuries so please people look after yourselves especially the christmas deadline coming up up no repetitive strain injuries please So that takes us on to finished objects. What have I finished? Well, I finished the monster. In the end, I think I finished it at like quarter past two. The party was at two o'clock. Fortunately, they only stay about five minutes from here. It's quarter past two, I finished sewing on the last arm. By 20 past, we were in the car and we got there about half past. It wasn't too bad. Um, I did take some photos and I will insert um, one or two here for you to see <laughs> the um, result of my um, repetitive strain injury. Um, with this little monster. I didn't do the, the actual pattern comes with two and it comes with a pocket and another little one I didn't do that. I just did the one monster and Titus really loves it and of course he wants one So if I do Manage to make another one or if I'm, I'm able to knit again in time for Christmas I might have to see if I can make Titus but over quite a few days And I think I might use a three mil and maybe not a 275 this time and not leave it in 24 hours that said, I'm knitting very carefully at the moment. I haven't been doing very much. So whether I could finish it in time, I really don't know. So what else did I finish? I finished, before this whole fiasco, my, um, I haven't actually washed and blocked them. I just put them on the sock blockers. My um, pink and orange stripy socks. I um, started, you'll see the one is, they sort of match. Not quite, but sort of. Um, opposite match if you know what I mean so where the one starts in orange the other one starts in pink and then they go up I think the, the one strap starts getting slightly bigger here here they're a little bit they're not quite exactly the same here they're a bit off but I think they're cool I quite like them so these are my um, orange strappy socks I did the rounded toe for the um, toe and I did um, the short row heel Got a heel on the heel and then just twisted ribbon cast off on the top. So I'm quite chuffed with those. So those are my sparkly socks done. This is the Twinkle Sock Yarn Base by Electric Carnation. And this was a custom dye for me in um, pink and orange. So that was that. And then the other one, of course, you know, is the monster and that I can't um, show you. So that's all I've got um for works in progress but seeing as i haven't been able to knit for the majority of the time since i podcast last i don't think that's too bad i think you'll just have to forgive me for that right so what am i working on um i mentioned last time that i was going to do a sock yarn blanket with gina and with um sally wool diaries and i don't think think I'd cast it on last time or I'd done one I can't remember anyway 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 I um have started and there's my sorry I'm busy with one and then it'll, actually if I pull the needle through it will go it'll hold up easier I um that's where I am at the moment so I'm just using up bits the first one I did was um the one from my mom's uh hope can rock socks and then I've just done various. Are those ones you'll recognize are the Monet socks I've done recently? And I've got um, 
this was a oh that was the one when i did the um uh what's it called the one where i tried to learn how to do continental knit night the knit night shawl that was from that and that was some orange that i'd used on the um stegosaurus the crochet stegosaurus i did for my um, nephew this one is from the um my uh my son's hero my sense here is this one, which goes through the blues. And then actually over here is, is another one of my sense here, which goes through the browns and reds. Um, I did a pattern from that. And this is the little boy colorway from Carle Denning, the little Dutch boy. And then the blue, I think, was from um, the elephant that I did for my niece. So, yeah, I'm just kind of using up little scraps as I go along. I might repeat some if I feel like it, or I don't know. I hope I'm going to have enough scraps. It feels like you need a whole load of scraps. I've got a whole bag of scraps, but... Um, I think it's possibly going to take a lot more than I've got. I'm quite enjoying this actually. It's really quite a nice project. I'm loving the randomness of it. I'm just, I did think that as somebody that's not fond of weaving in ends, I should be doing this as I go, shouldn't I? For those of you that have done this thing, have you been weaving in your ends as you go? Have you been really good? Cora, I know you're doing one. Gina, Sally, are you, are you sewing in your ends as you go? Are you being good? Um, because I, I'm not yet and I think also just to, um, later on to rest my hand I should maybe just sew in ends rather than do more knitting anyway so that's my um, sock yarn blanket and I've done a few others that are just loose squares I haven't attached them yet that was from the pink and orange um, socks that I just finished and that was from the first shawl that I ever made Rachel <coughs> oh excuse me if I cut that out, then you won't know it. If I do, please excuse me for my sneeze. <laughs> no one never knows with editing what you're going to feel like doing later on, the cutting and the pasting and the, all the rest. Sometimes I think the more that you fiddle with the clips, the more the chances of the timing going out and all these sort of things. So you might just have a big sneeze there in the middle of everything. Um, so that's what I'm working on. The other thing that I'm working on um, was the uh, Bonnie top and I haven't got much further. What I did do since last time, because remember I said I wasn't sure if it was going to fit or if the, the, the lacy part was going to be too low down because I'd split off for the arms quite a bit after the pattern it called for. And before I was knitting, um, I'd split off for the front but I'd kept the back on the needle. You know, so you just turn around and knit backwards and forwards, kind of using the needle as a needle holder almost. But because I couldn't try it on like that, I actually put this on a waist yarn See over here, I just threaded this on some orange waist yarn for the back and then tried it on. I got the geek to help me to try it on and it's actually fine. It's going to be absolutely fine. So there it's split off. Oh, it's hard to hold this up, isn't it? There it's split off for the arms and there's the uh, the lace panel in the middle. Oops, let me hold up. So these become the shoulders and that's the lacy bit in the middle. And I don't think I'm actually that much further than I was last time because I was doing toy knitting. And then, of course, not being able to knit very much since last week, Thursday. So anyway, I thought I'd just show you with the back split off. And, and I have tried it on, and it is actually okay. So that is my bonnie that I haven't done very much on at all. And then, as I said, last night I started knitting again. On Saturday night, we had um, Virtual Knit Night, which is our, it's organized via the South African group. Um, and it's a bunch of South Africans that just get together every second Saturday over Google Hangouts and then we have a chat and a knit and everything. It's quite fun. Um, and so when I had thought my hand was sore but didn't realize quite kind of the extent of it, I had thought on um, Saturday night that I'd put the heel in. And I did actually. I put in um, the heel for the geek socks and I did the fish lips kiss heel for the first time. And I must admit it does look rather odd off, doesn't it? <laughs> it is a very sort of funny looking heel on the side. It does sort of do that kissy lips. <laughs> Thing. Anyway, so I put it in and I didn't think it would, it was, I was dubious about it. Um, anyway, but he tried them on and he said it's very comfortable and he really likes it and it's very easy to do, you know. So I'm quite chuffed. I think I'll definitely do the, the fish lips kiss heel again. And so last night, I think after knit night, I had joined it in the round and done a few rounds. And then so last night, I just knitted that little bit, just slowly while I watched TV just to see how my hand did, and it wasn't too bad. I mean, I can feel it, it's slightly sensitive, 
but it really wasn't too bad. So I did this a little bit last night. I mean, I actually need to be knitting a whole lot faster because if these are going to be the Geek's Christmas socks, I've got the whole second sock still to knit. Um, and while I was determined that he wouldn't have them on the needle, because I had plenty of time, and I did. I mean, if I hadn't have had to stop knitting and need to now knit very slowly, I would definitely have had enough time to finish them for him. But I don't want to push it too much. I don't want to now overdo it and then just hurt myself again and then not be able to knit any longer. It's such a dilemma when one is doing gifts. Anyway, I don't know if you can see this. I was trying to take a photo for Instagram and it was washing the brown out and it was just looking like a solid bit of... Um, green it's kind of got green and you can see it on the heel there as well because they're slightly smaller they're sort of making a bit of a stripe there this is um nurturing fibers man sock which i think is actually discontinued i'm not sure she said at one point she might be bringing it back but i don't know it's a um a mohair nylon and merino blend and this is the woodland colorway which i think suits him geek is very excited about them he thought this is a really nice color so it's um it's normal or boring not boring enough no, he just likes he likes brown and green and gray and all these things so it is um the color suits him and it is interesting enough for me to knit that it isn't just a plain semi-solid gray sock where one might lose one's mind i've done that once and never again i'm never knitting a semi-solid gray sock again it's just nothing to keep you interested it's so boring so i'm not ever doing that again and as for works in progress that I'm actually working, well, working on being uh, <laughs> the, the, the um, debatable part at the moment, so I'm not doing much, that is um, the knitting at the moment. I spoke last time about tidying up and cleaning up and de-stashing and all the rest, um, well not de but um, organizing my stash and putting my stash on Ravelry. So it has been done. Part of my not being able to knit is I've had to find all sorts of other things to do. So I have photographed and put my entire stash up on Ravelry, which I'm really proud of myself for, actually. My stash really actually isn't all that big. Uh, I think I'm 52, 56 skeins or something like that. And I was quite surprised when I looked through that a majority or a lot of those had actually been gifted to me, um, which is quite nice, actually. Uh, so I don't have a very big stash. And it was quite nice to catalogue it all and to put it all on Ravelry. So my entire stash has been photographed and to put onto Ravelry, um, which was quite an achievement. I quite enjoyed doing that. And um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see what you've got and to see often as it lands up in the bottom of the box what you had planned to make from various things and all the rest. So the, the um, impetus to do this was that there is a, a challenge on the South African group uh, for things in, in 2015. So the one is the stash down throwdown. So you have to flash your stash, you have to show how much stash you've got. You have to have the entire stash photographed, well not photographed, you have to have the entire stash listed into Ravel. You don't have to have all the photos up by January. I think it's the 15th of January. And then you have to put down what are your stash down challenges for yourself for the year. <clears throat> so mine have been to, um, for as much as possible, to do a one in and one out kind of thing. So if I'm going to add yarn into my stash, I have to have knitted something out of my stash or gifted something out or whatever it is. So that my stash doesn't grow at all. Um, that That's the biggest goal, really, is to try to, and, and for, if at all possible, to try and see if I want to make something, if I've got something in stash that I could do first, you know, trying to use stash first. My only exceptions to this is the... Um, uh 2015 sock a month challenge that sally wool diaries and i are going to do and i can't remember if i spoke about this last time and apologies if i did but if i didn't what we're going to do is we're going to have a theme every um month of the year gets a, a theme and then we're going to each be responsible for getting um sock yarn dyed um for that month so my month was january and so I was responsible for getting yarn dyed for the two of us to knit socks in January on the theme of New Year. So I have done that and I've seen the yarn that I don't have it yet. I, that, um, I commissioned Michelle from Heartland to do it for us and it is beautiful. I gave her sort of a brief of what I thought of and I love it. I love what she's done with it, um, sort of with the theme and all the rest. So the first one was um, 
for New Year, and that was for me to organize. And then the next one is Valentine's in February, and that Sally's organizing that. And then March is back to me, and that um, we're doing um, St. Patrick's Day for March. And then April is back to Sally, and I think that's Easter, and May is me, and that's autumn, June is youth day i think because we have youth day here in south africa now I'm, I'm saying this from memory guys i'm really hoping i'm not going to get this wrong so june is youth day july is winter um august is women's day i think because we have women's day in august and um sort of a month focusing on on women's stuff in august september is spring october is halloween i think no, breast cancer in, in October. I'm going to have to get back to you. November. When is Halloween now? November. No, November is going to be summer. So it must have been because, because the last is the last day in October is Halloween. So I think October is Halloween. November is summer because it's our summer at that time. And then December is back to Christmas. So then we've divided in half. So I get... um. Six months and she gets six months and we're responsible for organizing the yarn for the other person and so the only prerequisite is that the yarn has to have nylon in it, it has to be well it has to be a yarn strong enough to knit socks um, and that's our, our sort of prerequisite which doesn't leave us with a terribly wide range of dyes here in South Africa because the dye community here in South Africa is very small and not all of them have sock yarn with um, nylon in them so anyway that's what we're doing. So that's my only exception for my stash, is that those yarns are going to be coming in one a month. I'm definitely going to be trying to, because I'm not buying other yarn, I'm definitely going to be trying to um, uh, make sure that I've knitted one out, you know, to get that one in every month. And I'm going to try to, you know, do extra during the, during the, the, the year as well. So I'll hopefully have stashed down a bit by um, next year. So anyway, that's our sock challenge for um, 2015. So anybody that would like to join us is more than welcome. Um, you can look through your own stash and find, um, you know, yarns that you want to, or um, I think most of the dyes might have extra skeins that are going to go up in their shops once we've asked them for what we want. We're not doing it, we're certainly not organizing a um, fixed club. You know, we decided at the very last minute so the idea of organizing a fixed club and getting yarn for everybody was a bit daunting. So we just decided to do it for the two of us. But I'm sure if there's anybody that's desperate to be involved, they could let us know. And then you'd have to make your own arrangements with the dyers that we're using at that time and um, get them to send you um, the same colorway for your own account or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, contact us if you really want to be involved. Otherwise, just come and join in and... Um, Knit yarn from your stash that kind of reminds you of those seasons or, or those um, uh, topic, oh, not topics, um, prompts, whatever the word is for for those months. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. Those are my. That's what's happening with my stash at the moment, and it is all catalogued, and I'm rather proud of myself. It is quite a long process, um, and I'm very pleased in the stash I'm not to have the biggest stash. I keep saying to the geek, Look, I don't have the biggest stash. I don't have the smallest stash by far either. But at least it isn't um, huge. And or, or, yeah, it already feels huge to me. Anyway, um, the next little bit Rachel really wants to come and do with me. And she's standing outside the window here, waiting patiently or not so patiently to come and um, tell you what else we've been doing in my um, in the time I've not been able to do any knitting. Right, so those of you that watched the podcast a while back will know that I was talking about making a log cabin blanket and that at my local yarn shop that I'd found some light yellow in um, Al Pure Wool, which is actually quite soft. And I had bought one and then Sally had said to me, but you can over dye that. Um, and so I'd gone back and had bought a whole lot more. And so not being able to knit, and then I spoke about this last time. I thought I must finally actually try dyeing this stuff. But, you know, when I can knit, that's always what I end up doing. It's like my default thing. I think, hmm, maybe I should do some sewing. No, I'll knit. And then I think, maybe I should do some dyeing. Hmm, no, I'll knit. 
And so it has to come to a point where I can't knit before I actually end up doing um, anything else. So Rachel and I decided to try over dyeing the yarn. And um, I'd spoken about asking for some tips on how to do the dyeing because I'd want you to do it in a, a plastic base and just sort of control the color. Um, because I sometimes find with stovetop dyeing, it doesn't all immerse properly and you can't stir it because of the heat and felting. Um, and you can't always get, yeah, the, the kind of control that you want over the color to take it out and add a bit of color or not or whatever. So I had really wanted to do it in the basin, but because I didn't have a microwave, I was worried about how to do the heat part of it. And um, Jesse maybe suggested that putting them in um, Ziploc bags instead of using um, saran wrap or, or glad wrap cling film to use them in separate Ziploc bags. So that's what I did. And then I put them in a vegetable steamer over a pot of water and I steamed them all like that. So now what I don't have is one of the original yellows to show you what we started with. But then we started doing some over dyeing. So we actually did the green first, didn't we? We did this one. Do you remember? We did one of these green. Some of them are very similar. That's when we added the blue. This was our first one. So I think this was the first green we did. And then we decided to do some a bit lighter. So we did, I think these two, we did in a slightly lighter green. And then this one. I think we actually added some yellow to this one no. or something. We made this one, I, we added something to this one to make it slightly I, more. I, I dyed it in the light green and then I popped it into the blue. Oh, okay. All right, anyway, and then we made um, we made quite a few of these. As you can see, our, some of them aren't actually all that different. Um, I'm trying to make different colors. I don't know why we landed up with quite so many greens that are the same. Anyway. And then we um, did blue, but because the yarn is um, okay. yellow, blue, blue. blue color, what we managed to get was this sort of teal color, and then this one, which had some green and blue in it, we just left in for quite a long time, actually. Um, and those are sort of the closest to blue that we could get. What I might do is see if in this brand of yarn, I can actually just get a blue anyway. I mean, that's more of a green. I mean, these are sort of the ranges closest to sort of blues we got those were our greens um as i say here's another green what um what i did figure out why some of these are bald and not um skeined is i really tied them seriously crap i didn't tie them tight enough at all i i was trying to avoid where you get the white tie off lines um you know, because then the dye doesn't go through. And I didn't tie them tight enough, and I didn't tie enough ties. I think I only tied two per, um, per skein. And, and yeah, some of it was, I could figure out and, and separate it and, and, and do it away. Some of them were such a mess, like such a mess. I had to literally detangle the entire skein. Anyway, so only a couple of those. And then we did, I did the yellow in yellow. So I made a much more sort of brighter, yeah. sunshiny yellow and then we did some red. red we added a little bit of red to the to the um, yellow. yellow and we made this sort of orange <laughs> and then a little bit more and that was kind of this corally mm -hmm. color and then the red we actually had two reds and I think I had a bit of red and then we added a little bit from Ooh. the burgundy uh, dye to this one and then we got this one and then we had a basin of blue and a basin of red left so we've got this, we did it first in the one and then in the other and then back in the first one. But so we kind of made this um, purpley sort of color. And then Rachel dug around in my, um, in some sort of a box of yarn that I really leave out for them. It's got acrylics and it's got some other things in it, but not in the, I really, I, I kind of go into it if I need to, you know, make a toy for somebody quickly. Although I actually normally knit toys in, in wool too. Um, it's really just there for the kids to play around with. And I have some L wool in there that's for felting. So I don't generally keep it in my stash. Um, and it was a yellow. So Rachel said, could we over could she over dye this one as well? So she did. Do you want to tell them about what she did? It was meant to be red and, and blue to make purple, but it didn't work. Well, because you had a um yellow. Because the base was yellow, yes. So she wants to do um she actually wants to have a red on the one side and the blue dye on the other and then make a purple in the middle. But um, I did say to her, I didn't think that it was going to work because the, um, 
yarn was really yellow. It was much more yellow. I mean, she was almost sort of starting with the yellow round about this color, maybe a little bit more orange to it. Um, so I said to her, she wasn't really going to get a blue, not with the, the, what I had. So she dyed the one side in the blue. This side was sort of bigger there. That was in the blue. And then she dyed this side in the red that I had left. And in the middle, she left a little bit of the sort of original yellow. It's a little bit Rastafarian almost, isn't it? But uh, all Christmassy. So we decided it was more Christmassy. Um, it's with the Christmas the, tree with Christmas bubbles and then the stars, the yellow. With the stars, the yellow. So yes, that was Rachel's um, Rachel's first dyeing attempt. It is, it is going to felt. I mean, it is. Um, you it can feel it sort bag. of uh, felting kind of wool. So I think she's going to knit or crochet something and then we're going to felt it. Oh, land up with pink hair in. That is a risk in this house if things land up with pink hair on them. You know, when you're cooking, it's terrible because you can't claim it's not yours. You know, when you everybody's got sort of like the same color or long brown hair or whatever it is, you can always blame it on somebody else. When you've got bright pink hair, it's not like you can blame it. <laughs> you can blame it on anybody else. So anyway, this was um, Rachel's skein. And then the only other undyed skein I had was some cotton. And I know this is actually animal fiber dye. It's, that's what it said on it. Um, and I know that you dye cotton slightly differently. But we thought, what the hell, we would just throw the skein of cotton in. And it took the blue. So that was really the only blue. Obviously, it, it quite a lot washed out. And I did the same heat method and whether it will all wash out or won't stay or why you don't use these on cotton I don't know don't know enough about dyeing but it was rather fun I must admit the dyeing is a bit addictive but um with the the trying to stash down it does not necessarily seem like a terribly good idea to get very into this although Rachel did tell me that she thought that she liked dyeing quite a lot more than she liked knitting or crocheting so she would just do dyeing from now on <laughs> mom can knit it Mom can knit it. Yeah, the only problem is, you know, these these ones that I got were on a, a special, you know, like a bargain bin because no one had wanted the really light yellow. And they were 50 grams each, which is nice to, to play with. Um, but, you know, when you buy, you have to buy an expensive skein of, of wool and then dye it and, you know, practice how to dye and to take, you know, have the chance of maybe messing it up a little bit. Um, it feels like quite an expensive exercise oh. in learning how to, to dye. Anyway, I mean, I will get her some some undyed skeins and she can have a bit more of a play around or whatever. Actually, for the blanket, I'm going to need more of these. But um, she wanted to play with mixing colors on the same skein, whereas for this blanket, I really want um, semi-solid or, or solid, yeah. Because, you know, doing the log cabin, you do those strips, so they all had to be sort of solid. But it was quite fun. I must admit, I think we got quite a nice range of colors and also there's our yellows to oranges our <laughs> bluey greens <laughs> and that was all of the the yarn we played with so that was our dyeing for those of you that wanted to see it um and the last thing i want to tell you about is it was swap parcel time remember i showed if you watched last time's episode i showed you what i was sending in my swap parcel and now i'm going to show you what i got in my swap parcel so i got a box from gina and everything was numbered in the box like this. All the little parcels had numbers like this. So um, we opened day one, and those were little um, Christmas tree meringues that she'd made uh, in green um, with the little uh, stars on top. And I think it even had um, glitter. Yeah. The glitter as well, yes. Little meringues with Christmas trees was the, the first day. So those are gone. Sorry. I'll see if I've got a picture and put that in because we ate those. Um, and then day two, and then each day has a little clue and then you lift the clue and then underneath it tells you, it says enjoy these items to make things with and to wear. One of each, what could they be? So the one to wear was my seriously cool reindeer brooch that I love like so much. It is just great. Mom wore it to the shop with a Christmas hat. I did. I told them early and you were embarrassed you wouldn't come to the shop with me. <laughs> so this is my um my reindeer brooch and I love that. And the thing to make something with was a Knit Pro crochet hook. And this is a 3.5. I haven't used the Knit Pro but apparently it's really nice and the, the handle is really um nice in your hands and I've been wanting to try the Knit Pro uh, crochet hook for a while so I'm dead chuffed with that so that is um, 
the first of my pro crochet hook collection. Um, and then so that was day two. And then day three. These are really nice. I want to make this for the children. She made me a little kit. Oh, the clue said, these are ready. Oh, are you ready for Christmas? Something in here will help you prepare. The pinklets would love to help. So this is for me and the children to um, make Christmas tags. So here are the little tags. And then there are some mm -hmm. um, snowflakes and stars and things to decorate with. Some glitter mm -hmm. and some washi mm -hmm. tape. So those are what we're going to make some Christmas tags. Mm -hmm. Um, with those so that was day two and I'm loving it what I do is the kids have an advent calendar and you know, every morning they go and get their presents out of the advent calendar and so it's been really cool what I do before I go to bed at night is I take one of the presents out of the box and I take it down and put it on my bedside table ready for me the next morning or if I've forgotten I send Rachel down to go and get it for me in the morning and it's really cool to have a little, to have your own thing to open every morning. I've loved it. I've loved it. It's been so cool to have one to open every morning. So that was the, um, that was the third one. Then the fourth one was, these really, uh, the fourth one says, project adornments in this bag on day four. So I got um, beads. They're very pretty. She did tell me what they were. They had a fancy name. I think they're those ones, those Japanese ones that have the absolute proper size beads. Um, it's the beads all, you know, sort of the measured size or whatever, so if you're doing a project. Anyway, and some really nice um, wooden orange buttons. Aren't those, I don't know if you can see the color, can you see the color nicely? They're quite orange, they're looking, this is blue tinge a little bit. But they really are quite orange, they're great, I think they're fantastic. So those are my, that was day four, and then day five was, um, day five says take care of your knits in a natural way. And so it is this um, liquid soap, Castile liquid soap. So it can be used to wash delicate such as wool, linen, silk, etc. or for regular hand wash or whatever. So this is really nice. I was actually thinking we don't have a lot of things in South Africa for washing hand nets. You know, I've seen all these nice things overseas and all these lovely brands that you've got there, soak and um, just please throw him out if he's going to make a noise here. Him and dog. You know, he's got so much terrier in him and, and dash and to like bark like anything. You take him on this walk, you know, that dog charity walk that we went on last time. And all the blim and dash ones are going, the whole time, you know. And the Yorkshire Terriers and stuff, oh my gosh, he makes you so yappy. I always said never get a yappy dog, but anyway, he's sweet, we like him, but he yaps. Um, yeah, like I was saying, there's always like so many, what's that other one? She makes little soaps. It's a tuft woolens. I'd love to get some of that. They look so amazing. I saw them on the Homespun House podcast where she had some. Those looked so nice. Anyway, so I'm really keen to try this because now I have something special to wash my, my knitting with. And then, so that was five. And then six was, oh, this is quite a cute clue. She said, both of these are useful for keeping. One keeps the other, although the other keeps other things. <laughs> and so that was, that was a little tin. And this one keeps the other, which is the little... Um, lockable stitch markers, you know, where you can open them so you can keep your place or keep your stitches, you know, keep a space, whatever. You, so that keeps your place and keeps your stitches, and this one keeps them in it. <laughs> that was quite good. So that was day six, and then today was day seven, and today's clue. Oh, I stuck it on here. This is also for keeping, <laughs> and that is a um, project bag by Anne's Work Basket. You'll know there's one of these in the um, knit along giveaway and I don't actually have one myself so it's really nice to be able to have one and she always does this little owl um, pull on the zip and then inside she also does a little um, uh, what do you call that tag with a uh, safety pin and then something to store your stitch markers on 
on the inside of the bag, which I thought was quite nice. So yes, I've got my own um, Anne's work basket now. It's for keeping this. And now I keep this in. So all my keepers are kept together at the moment. Um, and I said to Emma, I wasn't sure if the bag was to remind me that I never have enough time to knit all the things that I want to knit, or if it was to remind me to knit all the time. I think I like that one better. Although with the repetitive strain injury, that is proving difficult at the moment, which is why I'm doing anything else. I actually thought I might do some sewing in the next few days. Although I have started knitting slowly, I can't knit all the time. So I might um, do some sewing. What are you doing with your hat? Well, you made their jaunty little hat here <laughs> next to me. <laughs> I agree to forget that it's actually going on the internet, but she's kind of playing around the mirror with that. <laughs> anyway, well, look, here's Rachel's got her Christmas earrings, the little... Um, Christmas tree. Christmas trees, yes. So that, that's as far as I've got, up to clue seven. And read so, clue um, eight. all right, I'll read you clue eight. Uh, clue eight says a family activity. Decorate, color in, adorn your garden. I don't know what it is. Must be something. something to put in your garden. Something. Anyway, so that's for tomorrow. And then um, there's obviously Day 8, nine. 9, 10, 11, 12 for the 12 days of Christmas. And um, her parcel got there after a bit of drama. Anyway, it got there and she's been opening hers. So it's been really cool to see um, her opening each of her presents one a day as well. And she seems to be quite enjoying those. So that's it for the podcast this week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy knitting everybody and be careful. Don't hurt yourself. Knitting is dangerous. <laughs> Bye.